rounds out the SEC schedule for the LSU Tigers. Yeah, last SEC series for these eight seniors on this LSU team. LSU will play Liberty next weekend in a three-game series. Non-conference action, of course. Reagan Johnson at the plate. One ball, one strike. Johnson is a pesky leadoff hitter. On Friday night, uh, Burzon walked. Johnson didn't come back to, to haunt the Tigers, but once again, a little sloppy right there. And too much speed to catch Reagan Johnson. That's going to be an infield hit to open things. Johnson is aboard. Well, we have a malevolent wind. If you uh, if you're a if you're a uh, a hitter, it's very very difficult to uh, to beat this wind. It's a benevolent wind. If you're a pitcher, you like this wind. No home runs have been hit this weekend, and Look it's at this because Ooh, now the throwback here. and out. Pleasant's applying the tag to Reagan Johnson, who had overrun second base, and a very nice recognition by Madison Manning to throw a strike down to Pleasance for the tag on the overrun. Well, you always preach there is another play. There is another play. Look around. Very good job by the freshman here and gets LSU out of a potential jam. That was, I don't know if she got back. I was about to say that was close, but. Arkansas, she kind of bounced. Arkansas does not challenge. It's a base hit for Carter on the bunt, following the base hit by Johnson on the infield, but one on, one out. And this brings on Bree Ellis. A good changeup has Ellis out in front. And the Tigers get an outstanding play for the third athlete they try at third base since. Donica, Danica Coffey got hurt. That pitch is a little tight. Ellis is two for six in the series. They've both been singles. And she scored a couple of runs. Good block by Bergeron. She has to be very nimble back there because we said Burzon's best pitch is a drop ball, but she will waste it and throw it in the dirt. Trying to get the hitters to swing at a bad pitch. The 3-1 pitch tapped toward the left side. Pleasance cannot make the short hop pickup. The ball pops up into the air, and that's going to be an error on her and her third error of this series, which is very yeah, uncharacteristic. It's just, you know. Something we haven't seen out of this tremendous athlete in four years. That was a do or die play. And quite simply a 50-50 call. It's a very difficult pickup. You got to commit to it and hope, hope it bounces your way. How big is that pickoff though? Briggs second runs base. a long way to get it and throws it back to the infield. Runners on the corners after the tag by Nia Carter. How big is that pickoff at second base? That would have been a base, uh, that would have been a run for Arkansas there. The bases would have been loaded, sacrifice fly, would have scored a run. And now it's Kylie Halverson's turn. All right, beg your pardon, this is Hannah Gamble. And a strike from Burzon. That pitch is elevated a little bit. Two hits in the inning. They've both been on the infield. And that pitch is downstairs. Razorbacks are going to stay with the first and third so far. They haven't tried to steal second. As we said, they don't steal a lot of bases. Johnson does at the top of the order, but nobody else really. That's it. Kramer's got seven stolen bases. Eiffel didn't like that pitch call. That's a terrible call. That's what she said. That's not what I said. Yeah. 
popped up out of play straight back. That's an early souvenir. Tigers will be very lucky if they get out of this inning. They've got runners at first and third. Do the Razorbacks. Two outs. The turn of the tide that they need because they have had not had much luck. Gutierrez gets to it from her position at first base and takes the pop up. And this is Reese Berline in the circle for Arkansas. It's the first time we've seen her in the series. Yeah, she can throw everything. Her velo is 65. She can th come in with that changeup at 54. When I say she can throw everything, rise, screw, drop, change, and curve. Cave Creek, Arizona. That's pretty much everything, isn't it? Yep. She's only had three decisions, a two and one record, and this is blasted into the gap. It two hops the wall. Sierra Briggs is on her way to second base, and she opens LSU's bottom of the first with a ringing double that two hopped the left center field wall. Good opposite hitting team the Tigers have been, and she drives that ball in the gap. That's double number six on the season for Briggs. Got a little change in the coaching staff. We got Sandra, Mo Sandra Simmons Moten at first base, and we got Bryce Neal in the dugout. Bryce Neal was brought in to, he's a, a hitting statistics guru. There's Sandra Simmons. Great first baseman for the Tigers in her day. One of the best of all time. Although Gutierrez is giving her a run for her money this year. Mackenzie Ruderty at the plate with a count of one ball and one strike. Mackenzie is one for seven in the series. And a bet other than Gutierrez, nobody has had more than one hit against Arkansas so far. Yeah, it's been uh, slim pickings for the LSU Tiger offense. LSU is 10 for 51 against Arkansas pitching in the first two games. That's a 196 average. Let's see if the Tigers can turn that around today. Three and one on Rudity. Rudity smacks it well to center field, but it is caught in front of the warning track by Reagan Johnson. And once again, I think the win had a lot to do with that hit. We have not had a home run in this series by either team. That ball was hit well. Yes, it was. On any other day, I think it reaches the fence if maybe not over. That wind is blowing at least 15 miles an hour. It's been consistent for three days. Always has been a pitcher's paradise here. Especially it's warm and it's windy. Especially in the warmer months. Um, February, March, I think it's, you know, advantage hitters. April and May, advantage pitchers. Interestingly enough, because of the layout of the two fields, this wind has been blowing in with gusto throughout the series across the street virtually at the baseball field. This is a strong hitter's wind out toward left center field. But it's at, as you say, home plate is oriented in a different way here at Tiger Park. Right-handed hitters love days like this at the baseball field here at, in Baton Rouge, but it's blowing in to hitters on both sides of the plate at the softball park. Carly Petty brings a 309 average to the plate, one of five 300 hitters in the lineup, and they come consecutively. Petty chops it to the right side, and the play is made. Gutierrez, strike one. The Tigers worked out of a jam in their um in, top of the inning, see if the Razorbacks do the same. This is only the seventh start of the season for Burline, and she's had one relief appearance, so she has not been an every weekend pitcher. 
20 hits in 21 innings. Only six walks, nine strikeouts. The opposition is batting 250 against her. And the 0-2 pitch to Gutierrez. Smacked up the middle. Cammons in to has it, makes the throw over to first base. And that turnout, so they're excited about softball. Kennedy Miller, Reagan Kramer, and Hannah Kamenzen will bat in the second inning against Sidney Burzon, who had to work around some hot coals in the first inning. Burzon was able to keep runners at first and third and keep the final and get the final out. But Arkansas has been remarkable in putting runners on base in this series. Now, they haven't all scored. LSU has done a pretty good job of holding Arkansas away from the scoreboard, but my goodness, the pilot been light. Con constant pressure. The from pilot Arkansas. light has been lit it, it every has. inning yeah. by the Arkansas Razorbacks. The 0 2. Off the plate a little bit to Miller. Taylor presence for the first time in her career has had three straight games with an error. We were mentioning how rare it is, and uh, our research team here at uh, Tiger Productions has come up with that graphic. For the first time in her career, she has made an error in three straight games, and it probably will not happen again. Well, I think it's just the uh, epitome of the Tiger discombobulation here the last month and a half. If things can go wrong, they're all going wrong. I still think she's one of the best shortstops in the country, though. I'm pretty sure anybody would take her to play shortstop on their team. Burzon has taken out Kennedy Miller on strikes, and here is Reagan Kramer. Kramer is from Topeka, Kansas, hitting 240, three homers. 17 knocked in this year. If you're a catcher and Burzon is throwing, it may take a, a double scoop of Tide to clean your uniform mm. after the game. And a quick dip in the ice bath, I bet. Burzon will claim this herself. So Kramer pops up to the pitcher, and this is Hannah Kamenzen, the DP. She also pitched last night and was effective in relief. And her twin sister's on deck. She's first pitch swinging, and that's out of play. Oh, it sure makes it easier for a family with the girls being on the same team. Doesn't it? In games one and two, four for 21 with runners in scoring position for Arkansas, one for 14 with two outs and uh, a lot of runners left on base, 18 of them in fact. That's not real good, but it's been good enough to, to beat LSU twice. It's been good enough to win twice. Opportunistic hitting and or taking advantage of miscues by the Tigers. The one-two pitch. Low and outside. That's a base hit. That ball hung up in the upper part of the zone and was there for the plucking. And Kamenzen went up to get it and hit a knuckleball out to right field for a two-out single. Watch where this pitch is. It's elevated. So two gone and Kamenzen to board. And here is Lauren Kamenzen. Strike one at the letters.
Lauren is hitting 145. She's been about a three-quarter time starter at shortstop and is a good defensive player. That'll be a wild pitch as Hannah Kamenzen moves into scoring position and it's the second straight inning in which LSU's gonna have to fend off Arkansas from a runner with scoring position. Kamenzen is 0 for 6 in the series. That ball just kinda dropped. He's there and then he wasn't. The one two pitch. A little bit off the plate. And the two two swing and a miss on an off speed pitch. Kamenzen strikes out for the second straight inning. Burzon and company are able to keep Arkansas away from the plate. They've left runners worried about the final days of this season as LSU is trying to fight its way out of an offensive slumber. The Tigers appear in very good shape, of course, for postseason play in the NCAA tournament. But LSU just two for 18 in this series with runners in scoring position, 15 left on base, and four for 19 with two outs. Everybody on this LSU team is aware of what's going on right now and just trying to slowly make incremental improvement offensively as we play out the last couple of weeks of the regular season. Berline misses with a changeup to Newland. Allie Newland has been such fun to watch in her career, hasn't she? She has. She, you know, outfield is it's her territory, and she has made some ESPN highlights game after game after game. Somewhere on the internet, there's a compilation of some of her flying catches, many of them over the course of her career. And it's astonishing to watch. Well, and she gets to so many balls, you don't think she has a chance. The 3-1 the pitch. The off. read off of the bat is her, is definitely her advantage. She's a base runner. LSU has put a runner aboard to open the first two innings, a double by Briggs in the first, and the walk by Newland here. And it brings on Taylor Pleasance, who's in the, right now, just, in a tailspin offensively, very unusual for her. Strike one. Pleasance is hitting 145 against SEC pitching. It's almost hard to explain. It is. How well the Tigers were hitting at the beginning of the year to what the product is now. Taylor has gone 0 for 6 in the series. That's hit sharply to the right side, but it's playable by Halverson, the short uh, the second baseman. Newland is able to move to second base as Pleasance Pushes her teammate into scoring position. With a 4-3 put out, and here is Macy Bergeron. Bergeron hitting 269 on the season. And pops this one up. Ooh, and it almost that. came out of the glove of Halverson, but she's able to hold on. Yeah, she had to make a circus catch there. That ball, the wind just kept pushing it and pushing it. Bergeron now is one for six in the series. She ended up making a snow cone catch. Bergeron is one of the 
Few Tigers, though, have had as we look into her numbers a little more. She's hitting much better against SEC pitching than she is overall. She's about 35 points higher. That's uh. Let's see what Lynch can do here. Usually just the opposite. One of the few that has hit better in conference play than overall. Usually you're seeing so much better pitching in a conference. Lynch has struggled a bit against SEC pitching, hitting a little over 200. As opposed... Let's she's see what she's done in this series. Well, she's batting a thousand, one for one in this series. She only had one at bat. Actually, she's had more than that. She had two walks. She's one for one officially. She's been on base a couple of times with those walks. And the one-two pitch with a runner at second base, two outs. We are scoreless in the second. <laughs> Newland walked, Pleasance rolled out, pushing Newland to second base. Bergeron has popped up to the second baseman. Johnson has time and room in center field and makes the catch. Absolutely, you know, I probably made the mistake one year of trying to win that thing and we came out of the loser's bracket. And, you know, we got to the championship game, but we didn't have much left the next weekend at regionals because it was hot, it was in Florida, it was about 100 degrees. Here's Reagan Johnson. And it doesn't mean anything because everybody's getting in the tournament. And I've always contended, why does a why does a two-day tournament hold more weight than two months of conference play? I could not it agree with make you sense more. To me. I could could not agree with you more. But the conference tournament winner gets the automatic bid. I just don't understand it. Well, in a conference, quite honestly, of the quality of the SEC. Certainly. It, it's unnecessary. It's absolutely unnecessary. In, other than you got another trophy to put in your exactly, trophy case. Exactly, exactly. I think in other conferences, it's a way to maybe get two teams into the, tur into the tournament. But sometimes they don't take the overall winner. Well, so Johnson, it's just a pet peeve. Johnson walks on five pitches. She's been aboard twice now. You cannot be too kind and give uh, it's Reagan kind of, Johnson in particular some kind three of, bases. It's kind of amazing <laughs> that she's walked so many times. She came into the game with a 376 average. But you know what? She had only walked seven times coming into this series. Are the Tigers being too careful with her? Ooh. Oh, looky here. Now that was strange, but Gutierrez does get the out at second base on the force with some very quick reaction and some very quick thinking. She wanted to make the tag and then go to, she wanted to make the catch first and then go to uh, Let's see if she base. could have made the tag and still thrown her out. Goes, she might have been able to do it. But she was able but to get the lead, the lead runner, runner. At, yep. the, at second base. I'm sure and that would have been close to a double play had she caught that line, that exactly. thigh-high line drive. Exactly. But I'm sure everybody in the dugout was screaming, two, two, two. So it amounts to a 3-6 fielder's choice. But once again, her reactions are just so good. Wild pitch here. Drop ball in the dirt. That's going to shove Carter up to second base. And Yvette, this makes the third inning Here in a we row go. that Arkansas has had a runner in scoring position. Tigers have left some runners in scoring position also in two innings. Bree Ellis, one of the best hitters in the league at the plate. Who's going to blink here and get a base hit to drive in a run?
Ellis has two hits in this series. She scored two runs. That drops in beautifully for a strike. Ellis reached on Pleasance's error back in the first inning. Just There's missing. ball four. Not getting those corners. It's the second walk in the inning off Burzon. Runners at first and second with one out for Kylie Halverson. Hitting 315 with eight homers and 28 driven in. All SEC second team last year. She's two for seven in the tournament. And Newland is able to gallop to her right into foul territory and make the catch. Not exactly, but that's a can of corn for Newland. She is an anti-gravity left fielder because nothing hits the ground. Just her making spectacular catches. The pitch burns the edge for a strike. You know, that's Briggs's mentality in center field. Nothing will hit the ground. Runners at first and second with two outs. Gamble at the plate. He's way ahead of that pitch. Manning moves to her left, makes the pickup, and then wisely. They will have Liberty next weekend in Tiger Park. Manning sends a dribbler to the circle. It's grabbed by the pitcher, Reese Burline, and turned into an out. Here's Briggs, who two-hopped the wall with a double in left center field back in the first inning. Briggs is the best hitter for the Tigers against SEC pitching this year. She came into this game batting 317 against the league, and right now she's 27 for 83 at the plate against SEC pitching. That was her first hit against the Hogs a while ago. She was 0 for 6. Well, we talked about Arkansas having a base runner in scoring position in each of the first three innings. LSU has done the same thing in its first two at-bats. But, Lynn, this is the tale of the tape here. Allie Newland, 1 for 7. Briggs, 0 for 6. Taylor Pleasance, 0 for 6. When you see that off of the leading hitters of the team, you're not going to win too many ball games. No, that does... That's not an impressive indicator, is it, of, of success? No, and your best players are not getting on. Gamble to Ellis for the put out, one corner to the other. Two ground ball outs, and here is Mackenzie Ruderty, who flied to center field last time. She hit it pretty well. And that wind is really just whipping straight in. Rudy bangs one off the first baseman. She recovers and takes the throw back from Halverson, who got the carom. Did Kylie have mid forties and unlikely to be in postseason? Ooh. But the, the 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 point is, you could just take what we saw and make a very very valid. Entry into the SEC uh, to the postseason NCAA tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Conference is so good, you just keep building up the RPI points, uh, RPI points every weekend. That was a shot back to uh, Burzon. Kennedy Miller grounds out as we go to Reagan Kramer. Well, Liberty, which is uh, LSU's next opponent and final opponent in this ballpark this year during the regular season, has an RPI of 35, which is pretty decent. Coached by Dr. Dot Richardson, the very first um, shortstop on the Olympic gold team. UCLA, great Hall of Famer. 
It was fun to watch play shortstop. <laughs> Here we got a little chase in situation going. Just throw the ball to first. That is strikeout. Victim number three from Sidney Burzon. And two outs quickly here in the fourth inning. This brings on Hannah Kamenzend, the DP. She had a second inning base hit. So Liberty is here May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 5 o'clock are the game times. And then it's off to the SEC tournament hosted by Auburn this year on the 7th through the 11th of May. So after today event, three games will remain for LSU in the regular season. They will be played here against Liberty. We'll be watching or in attendance. Those games will be available for you right here on the SEC ESPN or ESPN SEC network. SEC ESPN network. You know where it is. The NCAA regionals are the 17th, 18th, and 19th Ooh, of May. Got her. And the super regionals are the 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th. Tried to come inside on her. Just got that elbow. Anna Kamenzen has been on base twice. A single and a bruise. <laughs> Maybe she's all guarded up. Here's Lauren Kamenzenda. Bowser. And for the fourth straight inning, Arkansas has a runner in scoring position. Groundhog Day. That's the third wild pitch of the day for Burzon. Kind of overthrowing that drop ball. This is popped up. Manning is calling for it. And once again, Burzon. So even though both pitchers have been living near the edge of the cliff on occasion, they've both been able to hold on to steady footing. A strike to Carly Petty from Reese Burline. Carly is batting 309 coming into the game. 26 driven in, including three home runs. As you said, Burline, this is only her eighth appearance. She started six, completed only one. Ooh. Petty is 0 for 1 in this game. That makes her 1 for 6 in the series. Petty might have swung at a ball there that looked high and tight. And she hit it near the handle and rolls out to the right side. That's Halverson to Ellis. That's oh. seven ground ball outs. Tigers are back to their regular coaching here. Bryce Neal at first, Sandra Moten back in the dugout. I remember trying all kind of things. Gutierrez grounded out to shortstop last time. Like, you know, that really matters who's at first base coach. And although he may talk, be talking to the hitters in the dugout. But you got to try everything. Superstition. Had her played perfectly. Kamens and uh, for the second time in this game throws out Gutierrez. Shaded more up the middle, was not in the 5-6 hole. And ball came straight to her. 
An event that is eight ground ball outs, including five in a row. We said she could throw everything. Evidently, her drop ball's working. LSU has been limited to one hit. And that came with Briggs leading off the game in the bottom of the first with a solid double into the left center field gap. On an elevated pitch, and Briggs went out and got that pitch. Newland walked last time. The first base on ball, the only base on balls from Burline so far. Tigers may need to zone up. No runs, three hits for Arkansas. No runs, a single hit for LSU. That single hit was a double. I don't mean to confuse you. I'm not confused. So in the summer, Lynn, when you're off for the uh, year, you just go outside and just call games, you know, just to stay sharp? <laughs> no. Look out. Or maybe watch a baseball game and do that. Just a little bit high. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Lofted into the left field corner and nobody can get to it. Nope, not gonna happen. People are getting some good sun today. Indeed. I, although I do, do see some ball heads that might need some caps on them. It could be hurting after this. The 3-2 pitch to Newland. Ball four. That walk comes with two outs. It's the second pass from Burline. And it brings on Taylor Pleasance. Ready for the Tigers. Shortstop, number 17. Trying to make something happen. We'll see if Beth Serena steals at this steals on this at bat. Not necessarily this pitch. Erline had retired eight consecutive batters before Newland's walk. Newman is four for six with stolen bases. Pleasance lifts one into the left field Will corner. Will it stay in? Ooh. Johnson did everything she could to make the catch. Whoever that is down there in the pen, you got to talk a little louder so your left fielder doesn't sacrifice herself into that fence. Let's see here. She's going all out, but she is going to... Ouch. That's exactly what she just said. Ow. <laughs> you see, she's giving them a thumbs down because I don't think they helped her. The 0 2. Now it's 1 and 2. So far, no stealing today. Maybe it's because it's Sunday. Maybe. Pleasance goes down on strikes, and that ends the inning. A runner left at first base after the two-out walk. Opportunities every inning. No one to step up yet. Deliver that uh, timely prime time hitting. That's what we used to call it. We end every day, every, every practice with prime time hitting. Reagan Johnson has been a prime time hitter the whole year. She's got 63 base hits including one in this game, and that's one of the leading marks in the SEC. 63 hits in this, the 47th game, is a whole lot. The throw to first base, and the strikeout, and the out at first. Good job by Catania, setting up on the, uh, in foul territory to receive that throw. Four strikeouts for Burzon. 
And here is Nia Carter, who has bunted her way aboard and also reached on a fielder's choice. Gutierrez gobbles that up, makes the tag, and the out is made. Two quick outs. You know, Yvette, here's what, what we just saw is, uh, I'm going to expand on that a little bit. There's a difference between the baseball rule and the softball rule. Softball rule does not allow the batter runner on a play like that to go Back backward up. to the plate. You cannot go backward. You've got to keep going forward. Can't in, crawl fish. In baseball, you can run yeah, backward. We talked about that. But it's a delayed dead ball. If that runner would have stopped and started back toward the plate to avoid the tag or even just back up a step. It's a delayed dead ball, but that runner is out. Not so in baseball. Now, you can't leave the base path in either case, but that's one of the pretty few subtle differences in the games. Flex, DP. Here's Bree Ellis, 1-1 one, one pitch outside. Yep, you can't be a crawfish and back up. Yep. And you'd think baseball would that have that rule since it's it's a delay of game. Although they're, they're flying over there call, uh, playing baseball games now with all their clock rules. That should be playable. Oh, no, hit the screen. LSU has won twice this weekend against Auburn in baseball. Three to two last night. The winning run scoring in the ninth. And a five nothing shutout earlier. Here's the two two pitch. A little off the plate. We'll check in with the baseball score and some SEC scores in a little bit. We should have some softball scores. Uh, I know we've had one final, and yeah. we'll, we will pass them along shortly. Some games starting at noon. Two outs, a 3-2 count on Bree Ellis. Arkansas has not had a base hit. Since Hannah Kamenzen's single with two outs in the second inning. There is room for Newland. And there's the third out. But not able to cross the plate. We got Bedlam in the stands. They are unloading t shirts from the roof. And once again, you'd think they were goal bars being thrown. <laughs> Gold bars, I would be uh, asking you to hold on to my ankles while I leaned out the window. You'd be having that briefcase out the, would, out the window, I just would. sticking it out there. Here's Sierra Daniel. For those of you who don't know, Lynn's briefcase could go uh, probably go on that antique roadshow. Well, it came over on the Mayflower, I know that. Sierra Daniel batting for Bergeron. But Lynn no longer has a flip phone. I'm going back to it, though. I like that jitterbug. They're kind of cool. Screen's way too little, though. Oh, the jitterbug is for... Is that for senior citizens? Yeah, that's which, the, of which I'm one. That's which the, I'm that's one. That's the big. I need know, all, a 4K. all the big numerals and all of that. I need a 4K phone instead of a TV. Well, it's a four-pitch base on balls. So Daniel, who is not a big target, gets aboard. That's the third walk from Burline. It's the third time today that LSU has put its leadoff batter aboard. And now we go to Kelly Lynch. In her only previous at bat, she flied to center field. She had been one for one, so she's 
Ooh, gonna put, try to put down a butt. Now we got Howard Dobson at first. Howard Dobson sporting the cheaters now. Welcome to the club. I'm talking about glasses, not talking about the game. The 0-1 pitch to Lynch. Popped up, foul Will ground, and out of play. Let's get you caught up on that baseball score across the street at Alex Fox Stadium, Skip Bertman Field. Auburn scored five runs in the first inning and has a 6-1 to one lead in the third. LSU has won the first two games in the series, but Auburn, the last place team in the SEC in baseball, leading 6-1 to one over LSU in the third inning. The 0-2 to Lynch. She protects the plate and fouls it away. And we've got two finals from SEC softball. Florida beat Georgia 10-7. There have been a lot of runs scored in that series. Must Florida be windy. Had seven. How about this? Where are they playing? They are playing at Georgia. Yeah, and if the wind's blowing, that's an easy park to get some home runs out of that field. Well, the teams combined for 10 runs in the seventh inning. Florida scored seven times in the seventh inning. Georgia got three runs in the seventh. Florida wins it 10 to seven. So Florida was trailing by a substantial number of runs going into that last inning. Bombs away sometimes in that park. Nice play. Out at second, safe at first. Nice turn. Game has come so far with double plays. The footwork is just excellent. South Carolina shut out Kentucky 3-0. That's a final. Watch this transfer. Kind of throws it away, but. Nice turn. Ole Miss. And the, the first pitch. Swing and a miss. That one had some hook to it. One out, a runner at first. One ball, one strike on the youngster, Madison Manning. Who made a nice play in the first inning to pick off an errant runner at second base. She hasn't had a lot of base hit opportunities this year. Or Plate appearances are limited. That's off the pitcher. Manning is on her way to first base and makes it without a throw. So Manning, who had a base hit earlier in this series, gets her second hit of her career with a liner off the pitcher's glove. Yeah, she hit it hard enough so it ricochets off that glove. Courtney Dyfel not wasting much time, and we will, we will have a pitching change, Lynn. So Burline has Briggs. Briggs is one for two. There's a strike, and that levels the count. She's going to throw a drop, a curve, change. Her velo 64, change up is at 52. Cammons and out of Nebraska. Nine and one record, an ERA of under three, 56 and two thirds innings. Oh, that's, that's a fair a line. ball. Oh, Runner coming to the plate. The throw is off, off the mark. Good throw with a hatter, but Easily. that throw was off the mark. So LSU sending Townsend. She would have been out by eight feet at the plate. But, but you the know, throw was on the foul line side and no chance for the catcher to recover and apply the tag. And if you Beth Torini, you send her. You got to make something happen. And for once, and for once, you know, it's on the Tiger side. It's not a good throw. You know, people would have said, if she'd have gotten thrown out, everybody would have, ah, she got thrown out by eight feet. But at this point, you got to try something. It's a base hit for Briggs, her second of the game. It's an RBI for Sierra. And that third baseline is wide open for Briggs. Uh, they're shading her more over to shortstop. Briggs has 20 runs batted in now, and LSU grabs the lead. And their corners are creeping in, thinking it might, might be a squeeze, suicide squeeze, bunt. The run is charged to Burline. Beth Tarina does like to squeeze. 
A chance for more runs here. The Tigers have runners at third and second with one out. Ruderty at the plate. Pinch runner Townsend scored from second base. Manning scampered to third. Briggs on the throat of the plate advanced to second after the RBI single. Ruderty has flied to center and bounced out three to four to three. And there's a walk and the bases are loaded. Tigers were generous to the Razorback yesterday uh, with walks. Razorbacks are returning the favor here. Hannah Kamenzen has pitched to two batters and surrendered an RBI single and yielded a walk. Hit the ball to the right side or get it out of the infield is Petty's job. Twice she has grounded out to second base. Steve, right one. I wanted to swing at that pitch. Don't take the first inside, uh, outside pitch and dribble it to the left side. Each team has three hits. LSU leading one nothing. Ground ball to the shortstop. The throw to the plate. The force out there. Right Six side. Six to two on the putout. Hit it to the right side. Well, Manning is forced at the plate. Petty reaches on the fielder's choice. Briggs is now at third. Ruderty at second base. Petty at first, and here is Gutierrez, who twice has grounded out to the shortstop. After a four for four performance last night, it was the first four hit game in her career. Ball one outside. We play in the bottom of the fifth. LSU has finally broken through, leading one nothing. Johnson coming on and makes the play in left field to retire the side. How about that dog at the ballpark? Lynn, don't talk about that person out there in left field. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> the one in the baby carriage. We're in the sixth inning. It's Kylie Halverson for Arkansas. We've got an update from the LSU Auburn baseball game at Alex Box Stadium. Stephen Milam has hit a three run home run for the Tigers. Auburn still leads, but it's now a six to four game. Erzon pours in a strike. Sydney is making her 17th appearance as a starter. And she'll field it as it dribbles into her glove in the circle. Halverson is retired. Her durability of that has been Something to uh, laud because she has 15 complete games in her 16 previous starts. She's built for a pitcher, you know. She's long and strong. 32nd appearance this is. This is her 17th start. Came in with 149 innings of work and 134 hits allowed. 33 walks and 143 strikeouts, and the opposition was batting 234 against her prior to this game. She's working on a three-hit shutout right now. Here's Gamble, who's over two. And the 2-0 pitch drops in for a strike. But Burzon, when she starts, she generally finishes. Yes, she does. She's the leader of this staff. She comes back and pours in another strike, and that levels the count at two. Yeah. 
Burzon retired the Razorbacks in order for the first time in the fifth inning. One out. A 3-2 pitch coming to Gamble in the sixth. Way ahead of that pitch. Still have a good crowd out here, Lynn. A lot of schools would be overjoyed at a crowd like this. There's been some cloud cover today to offer a little relief, and of course that wind continues to blow toward the grandstand. The 3-2 pitch, ball four. There's one midweek game remaining for Arkansas. That's actually in Conway. Arkansas will go play UCA, University of Central Arkansas. That's on April 30th. And then Arkansas has one weekend remaining against SEC competition. That'll be against Ole Miss on May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Catcher, number 17, Kennedy Miller. Here's Kennedy Miller. She's a freshman catcher. Swing and a miss. Miller has had a really nice rookie year. She's batting 377 coming into the game. This is her 44th start. And she's done some really nice stuff as a first year player. Yeah, with the Razorbacks using an arsenal pitchers here this weekend. Six homers for this freshman, 30 driven in. An event, it's different obviously on each team, but it certainly is no surprise that a large number of first year players have an impact on their team and in the league, even though they are freshmen. The talent level of new players is increasing every year, every nearly year. every position. No, we don't redshirt like football or basketball, mostly football. You're recruited to play. The 0-2 pitch to Kennedy Miller, high and away. Two pitch, swing and a miss. Way ahead of that off-speed breaking changeup. It's a dandy. That's five strikeouts for Burzon. This one just hangs in the air as it approaches the plate, spinning like a yo-yo. Got a pinch runner. Ali Saki is pinch running for Gamble with two outs. Here's Reagan Kramer, the left fielder. She has popped up to the pitcher and struck out. One time I'm going to make an all great name team. Ali Saki's going to be Saki. on it. <laughs> She's going to be on my team. Right back to Burzon. The throw over to first base. And there's the third out in the sixth. Burzon throws the dog. Brings Taylor Pleasance a little good luck here. Newland to Pleasance and Bergeron scheduled a hit for the Tigers. One nothing LSU in the sixth. Reese Burline went four and a third innings. Gave up only two hits and it turns out that she was charged with the run scored. She walked three, she struck out one. Hannah Kamenzen, who's pitching in relief for the second time in the series. Came on and yielded an RBI single and a walk. Eventually got two outs. But LSU has grabbed the lead 1-0 with that marker in the fifth inning. 
about to say she's on the verge of walking the leadoff hitter, but comes back with a strike. That's wrapped sharply, but Halverson is there at second base. Yeah, you can't hit it any harder. A 4-3 ground out. Speaking of dogs in the ballpark, a couple of weeks ago, remember there was Bark in the Park. Yep, it's always a huge success. And the reason I bring this up is it was a crucial moment in the game. Briggs was in the on-deck circle and high-fived somebody's golden retriever in the stands and then came on and got a big base hit for LSU. Was it Briggs or Newland? One of them. Who had it been Briggs? Now, you're not going to be able to high-five that pooch. <laughs> She's Inspector Gadget, but no. Her limbs don't reach that far. The 0-2 pitch to Pleasance. <laughs> Pleasance rolls it down to first base. Well, Jake didn't bring uh, Taylor any Good luck there on that hit. It's Jake. Jake. Kind of like that. Hello, Jake. Man, that, that dog is thirsty. Well, I they think. just gave it isn't some that, water. Isn't that what that means? Yeah. A hard strike over the outside corner to Bergeron. It's a warm day. Good looking pitch, but it's a little high. She really had Bergeron buckled on that pitch. One ball, one strike. This is looped out toward right center field. It could be trouble. It's down for a base hit. Yep, it was in no man's land. Welcome, Judy. Not quite so sure where our team called it a Judy, but it's a blooper. Welcome, Judy. How about Texas Leaguer in the old? Yeah, uh, that too. The old Burbage. I wonder why it was a Texas Leaguer. Somebody in Texas named it. I guess they had a lot of pop-ups in that minor league that fell for base hits. You know, at least half of the lore around baseball and softball is probably incorrect anyway. Oh, I'm sure. But that's okay. Can of corn. That's okay. Let's think of some good ones. Can of corn. Uh, Let's gravy. see what Lynch can do. Fishing. Here. The hitter's yep. gone fishing. Yep. I'm kind of partial to uh, to window shopping. When you're called out on strikes. Yep. Just looking. The 1-1 one, one. off the plate wide. You know, Yvette, you mentioned it in the first two games of this series, but I have been singularly impressed with the quality of the, uh, the ball and strike calling here by all three of these umpires. It's been a very good crew. They've, uh, you know, not many controversial calls at the plate. Maybe a couple miss, but that's in our uh, our eyes. But Chris Neighbors is behind the plate today. Alex Leap is at first base, and Cameron Ellison is working the other corner. Yep, all three have been very, very good, I think. There's ball four. The inning is extended. So a two-out hit by Bergeron, a two-out walk to Lynch. And it's going to be Jaden Lanou or Lanou. 
Lanou. She's a freshman. Leno, I was wrong, it's Leno. She hasn't had a lot of advance. Let's see what this slender left-handed batter can do here. She stands even with the dish. LSU trying to extend a one nothing lead. Any chances has Leno had? She's one for five this year. Getting a steady dose of that curveball that's just nipping that outside corner. Leno is batting for Manning. The one two pitch, two on, two outs. A one nothing lead for LSU. The shortstop is calling for it. Cammons and the backing up and one run, four hits, one error for the Tigers. And, for the, and on we go. And for the eight seniors on this LSU squad, they sure would like to win their last SEC game here. Hannah Cammons and has singled and been hit by a pitch. A one strike pitch nubbed off the cap of the bat, bouncing foul. And the 0 2 downstairs. Got Swing her. and a miss. That pitch was floating on the outside part of the plate. Strikeout number six. <laughs> Ryland Hedgecock, who has been a starter in this series in the first two games, is coming off the bench now. She's one for four. Hedgecock. Hitting 231 on the year. Four home runs if you're thinking long ball, but again, it would have to be to gale force wind. And we hadn't had one hit all weekend. LSU has scored one run in each of the first three games. Will the one run be enough here in the final game? They hadn't had much luck all series. Will it change? Hedgecock does not wear batting gloves. The 0-2 pitch, dribble to the left side. Manning's got it, slings it across. A wide throw, but a good stretch by Gutierrez, and there are two outs. I LSU know. scored one run on Friday, one run on Saturday. Will one run be enough today? There's a lot of ones, and then one more, and the game is over. This brings on Reagan Johnson at the top of the order. She has a base hit. She has walked and she struck out last time. Only seven hits in this ball game, Lynn. Burzon looking for her 16th victory against seven defeats and her 16th complete game in 17 starts. Two First, balls and no strikes. Bergeron going out there and showing a little leadership and going to talk to her. Carter is next. There's only Carter would be next if the game is extended. And between Johnson at the plate and Carter, there's only been one home run between them. But if you get to Ellis, she's hit 14. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Reagan Johnson. That floats in for a strike. That's a really good pitch against the slapper. 
And floats is a good word. Good description. Here's the 2-1. Back to the heart stuff that, uh, that drop missed. Three and one. Burzon looks inside of herself, trying to get one last pitch here. Off, Off the, the plate. And the game is extended. Razorbacks still have life. And here, here's a young lady who's been given a, a few free passes. Nia Carter has bunted her way aboard. She has reached on the fielder's choice. And last time she rolled out to Gutierrez. LSU wants to take care of business right here and keep one of the best hitters in the league away from the plate in Bree Ellis. She's on deck. One strike now to Carter. The pitch off the plate. Ellis, by the way, has reached on an error, walked, and fly to left. LSU does not want to have to deal with her. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Ooh, that's close. But that's been a ball. I think that's a little bit down. But awfully close. The 2-1 pitch. Grounded right back to Burzon. She's got time to make the throw. She's on the money, and the Tigers 